Okay, welcome to Successes and Setbacks, Sustaining Tier 1 Fidelity in a Middle School Setting. We are from West Allegheny Middle School, middle school down by um, Pittsburgh. I am Bobby Joe Buggy. I, te I teach 7th grade ELA for about 26 years. God help me. And then this is Jessica Henry. I'm Jessica Henry. Um, I've been teaching for, this is my 20th year. Um, I've been in 7th um, grade history for the last uh, 13 of those. And my name is Valerie Meehan. I am sixth grade world history, and I've been there for 20 years. So all of us in our classrooms also have inclusion, the inclusion classrooms as well as um, uh, everybody else. So we are West A. We're 15 miles west of Pittsburgh. We have a sixth through eighth grade building. We have two teams per grade level. And we also have a nine period day. We have approximately 3,500 students district wide. Approximately 800 students are enrolled at WAMS, West Allegheny Middle School, which is under construction right now and an absolute mess, but we're dealing with it. Um, we were 2017, 18, and 2021, 22 schools to watch designee. 18, 19, 1920, 2021, 21, 22, 22, 23, tier one fidelity awardee, and 22, 23, tier two fidelity awardee. So as you as you may have saw uh, as you may have seen in the um, co um, the conference um, descriptor, our our team has been established for about eight years. This is our eighth year, um, and as you know, in a middle school setting, in a secondary setting, kids can be challenging. What works one day doesn't work the next. Um, you throw in there a pandemic, um, you throw in there some renovations and it can be it can be a little unsettling at times and what worked the year before in PBIS um, you have to switch it up occasionally so these are four things that we have found um, that have sustained us throughout our whole program um, these are the kind of the cornerstones of our WAMS pride program that's the title of our program um, the first one being effective secondary acknowledgement systems you got to have a good reward system at the core. Investment in staff buy-in, which is so important. Establishing a strong student team. And then finally, um, something we integrated last year was bridging PBIS with our advisory program, which is, again, so important in a middle school to have an advisory program. So I'm going to kick it over to Valerie, and she's going to talk to you about some acknowledgement systems. All right, so many of you may have seen us before. Um, we've been presenting here for a few years. We try to change up our presentation. Last year, we presented on student teams. Um, and it seems when we do our presentations, we always have questions about like, well, what came first? What did you guys do to start off the program? Or what is your acknowledged system leading up to that? So today, that's why we're kind of going to do a little overview with our entire program and what worked and, and what didn't. So our school-wide acknowledgement system, we started with a WAMS Pride 200 board. So many of you are probably familiar with the Principal's 200 board. Um, our school-wide expectations are safe, responsible, and respectful. Students earn tickets for that. We tried to move it to a virtual ticket during the pandemic. It just wasn't as effective, so we are continuing to do a paper ticket. We pass out tickets. When we see kids that are demonstrating those expectations, they receive a ticket, they go down to our main lobby, and they put the ticket on the wall. They can earn those tickets pretty much anywhere in the building. We started off in the hallway. You know, we taught those expectations of walking down the right side of the hallway, carrying your books, like maintaining a safe distance. Um, we moved into the bathroom, which was a little bit more difficult because, you know, you can't really go into the bathroom, but we kind of refresh all the refresh them on like what they should do, proper manners um, and how they should act and dismissal in classroom. So our dismissal, it's kind of hectic because we have one dismissal and we have all 800 kids pretty much go outside at the same time. Um, we just recently got a new assistant principal and on the first day that he was there, he could not believe what happened at dismissal. Like he came from a smaller school and he was like, I don't know what I just saw. <laughs> so 
We have we to have, try like, to... We have, like, colored pods and everything. Yes. Like, the kids so on second wave. Have to uh, it's really pods. hard. You have to, like, rein them in and make sure they're out there. So we made sure to include that as we were moving along and focusing on our problem areas. And then, of course, the classroom. Um, we do have classroom systems that are in place, again, during the, pandem the pandemic, the um, pandemic. Things did kind of fall through because teachers were on carts moving from classroom to classroom. But we have brought that back, even though we're in the middle of construction. Teachers are to have an expectation system in their classroom along with the school wide system. Okay, for our WAMS 200 board, if you want to show that, Jess. Um, our WAMS Pride 200 board, we have it in our main lobby. It is pretty big. And the students come down, put their ticket on it. And then once the board is full, which is typically every two to three weeks, we give two tickets to every staff member every week. Our life skills class likes to help out with some of the responsibilities. So they go down to the mailboxes every Friday. They put two tickets inside every mailbox. So starting on Monday, every teacher has two. Um, so we do fill that about every three weeks. Once it's full, we pick a row and a column, and everyone in that row and column receives a prize. Okay, something, something small. Sometimes we have like some little tchotchkes, you know, we have some Wham's Pride pens and notebooks and bracelets, sometimes chocolate bars. This past week, we had Halloween bags that had a Wham's Pride pen, a water bottle sticker, some Halloween candy, a Halloween pencil. So um, the kids actually really like that. And then we always have our winner that is at the intersection. And that student receives a $10 Amazon gift card along with a prize. And they like getting that recognition. And then they get their name up on the board. So to the right of our board, it has our like big winners. And so their name gets to go up there for the entire year. So this is, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust this and just get the awkwardness out of the way. Um, this is our... That was a well in middle school class. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah. That's their daughter. Yeah. Um, this is our universal board. So you can reward students at WAMS um, in any environment through this board, through these tickets. So that's for, you could do this for classroom, cafeteria, bathroom, hallway, any, any environment in the school. Yeah. And then, okay, I can't. I literally can't. I can't. It's so embarrassing. Okay. So anyway, um, so when the board gets filled up, the students get prizes, but then also as an incentive for the teachers, when the board gets filled up, we get to wear jeans. I mean, if, if that's what we get, that's great, you know? And but the we teacher get, that um, and actually gives the winning ticket, that one in the intersection, they get a gift card as well. So that sometimes it's just a $5 gift card to um, Starbucks, but they also get awarded. So there's a little incentive to give out those tickets too. Yeah, because sometimes that's hard for the teachers to give out the tickets, so... A little mm -hmm. incentive for yeah. staff buy-in. Yeah. Um, so when we rolled out classroom systems, uh, we, we realized that there were going to be um, some, te some teachers that pushed back. Um, so we wanted to do um, a really methodic, um, very thoughtful process for rolling out classroom systems. Because it's one thing to ask teachers, hey, pass out a ticket every now and then for you know hallway behavior. But to ask them to implement something in their classroom day in and day out, they need support, and they need time, and they need examples. So. Um, the first step of creating classroom acknowledgement systems was to have teachers work together in content level groups or grade level groups to really streamline your classroom rules into common school expectations. Like Val said, our school expectations are safe, responsible, respectful. And everybody's classrooms rule, classroom rules fall into those categories in some way, shape, or form. So we just had the teachers kind of streamline the wording and categorize them based on safe responsible and respectful behaviors. Um, next, the teacher, or the, um, sorry, the office staff created posters displaying our WAMS behavior matrix. So the teachers didn't have to go out and make a new rules poster. They didn't have to create anything. It was already done for them, which didn't take up any of their time, which they appreciated. Next, teachers were given time during our beginning of year in service to create lesson plans for directly teaching what safe, responsible, and respectful behavior looks like in their classrooms. Because especially after the pandemic, you take for granted that students automatically know what these behaviors look like. They hadn't been in school in some districts in PA. They hadn't been in physical school for over six months, even longer. So you can't take for granted that these kids know what safe,
safe, responsible, respectful behavior is, you have to teach it to them, um, especially some students from, you know, different home lives and different um, different expectations in their home might be different than students that grow up in, you know, I don't know how to, <laughs> other environments, yeah. Um, some students come in with those, come in with those um, behaviors and some students need those taught explicitly. Um, so after that, after the teachers streamlined all their rules, um, again, we gave them time to um, develop an acknowledgement system that would work for their classroom. So the first step, you have to decide if you wanna do an individual acknowledgement system, like a raffle ticket system, or do you wanna do um, a whole group, a, a collective um, acknowledgement system? Step two, the teachers were given a big menu of sample acknowledgement systems um, to give them ideas. We really wanted them to know, if you wanna be creative with this and you wanna run with it, go ahead, have at it. You might have better ideas than we do. But we also knew that there were those teachers that were gonna say, basically, if you don't do it for me, I'm not gonna do it. And if you don't give me the idea, I'm, don't, even, don't even talk to me about it. So they got a menu of all these different classroom acknowledgement system examples to pick from. And then we told them, select a system that's easy to implement, that fits your style, and fits your expectations. So if you, if you pick a system that is super, super complicated, like, a, like a, a buggy bucks system, where you can earn money, and you can earn money to get certain things, certain you know, items, um, if that's too much for you to handle, don't do it. Don't, you know, don't bite off more, that you, more than you can chew. Um, select a system that you're actually gonna utilize every day. And then, step four, we distributed a list of reward ideas to staff, because a lot of staff members were like, I don't know what to give these kids when they do earn rewards. Um, our PTA was instrumental in helping us um, fund some of those things. Um, teachers could apply for grants where PTA, the PTA would give us um, $100 to spend on candy or other items. And rewards can be as simple as a little five minute YouTube video. That's one of my favorites that I do. I love to do bad lip reading videos. They love it, especially the Yoda one. Does anybody know the, the Yoda seagulls? Stop it now. Oh, look it up. You won't be disappointed. Um, <laughs> here are some examples of some of our, um, some of our reward systems. So in Mrs. Meehan's class, she does a ticket system. And then she'll do random drawings. In other classes, uh, some teachers use games like Kerplunk or Cootie. So like if, if period three, four does a great job, she will pull out one of the sticks of the Kerplunk game and when the marbles fall, the class gets a reward. Um, another teacher did punch cups and then positive puffs. When you fill the jar, you get a prize. Um, another teacher, she, she did a great job. This one wasn't even on our radar. Um, she did chain gain and t uh, the students could earn chain links uh, for different behaviors like getting right to work, being prepared, super behavior for the sub, and once that chain link reached the ground, they had a party. So that was really cool. Okay, I'm gonna geek out over this a little bit. <laughs> One of the items of feedback that we received from the teachers was that you know, they were kind of upset sometimes when students were rewarded on the big board um, students that weren't necessarily that great in class and they were they were kind of upset by well how did that student end up getting a ticket on the board that's unfair when you have this kid that's great in my class every day and they don't get anything so we had a solution for that we took the teacher feedback and we decided to create something called golden ticket week and how can you have something that's golden without advertising it with the golden girls so <laughs> We, uh, we really played up the theme. Even though the kids didn't know anything about Golden Girls, we had a blast with it. So Golden Ticket Week works like this. You give one or two, I'm sorry, we do this one or two times per year. We do it once in the first semester, once in the second. Um, and this is a special recognition honoring students who epitomize our school-wide expectations. Um, teachers nominate two students and they give them a special raffle ticket that entitles them to a celebratory ice cream social and special prize drawings. We recently just added in the ice cream social because um, you know middle school kids are like, hey, I got this raffle ticket, but I didn't win. <laughs> um, we give some really nice baskets, um, but with the ice cream social, it was a way for every student that received a ticket to come and celebrate. So we did it on a ninth, during ninth period on a Friday. 
it was about 100 students because um, we try not to duplicate our winners either. So we keep a running list of the students that receive tickets from the teachers. The teachers will send us a message so and we send it out at the beginning of every day so they can look over the list and go, OK, well, I was going to give it to that person, but I'll spread the love and give it to someone else. Um, and that makes it really nice, too, because it, then you can you know, acknowledge more students. Um, but the kids came down to this really cool um, activity period, basically. We had ice cream and chips, and we played some music. And yeah, they had a lot of fun. Um, this was our big winner uh, la last year. Um, but in addition to that raffle ticket, each student nominated gets a postcard mailed home to share the good news with their families, um, which actually you wouldn't think that they would be so excited about, but they, they actually love the the props to their parents. They love it. Um, it does generate a ton of excitement among the student body and it, as well as the staff. It gets the staff um, involved in PBIS in a different way. They feel like they have some control over it, which is super, super important for your staff. Yeah, it's definitely our staff's favorite thing because now they feel like they're really acknowledging the kids that go above and beyond every day. Um, and Jess really went wild with the, the memes with I told Golden you. Girls. Like, she would have that picture, but our faces would be on it, plastered around school. Like, And then our principals and our assistant principal, you know, they were, their faces were on memes for Golden Girls. And she'd send out some, some sketchy ones uh, just through our email to the staff that made everyone laugh. She's going to show a video. I was going that to show created. it, but the, the HDMI is stuck on my desktop, so I'm not sure why. We might have to just go back. Bear with me for a second. So Jess is really good at creating videos, and um, she's also a wonderful singer. So for this particular activity, oh, it's oh, looks like we're gonna. That's weird. All right. Well, we'll is it work down, on that. Down at the bottom. Can you pull it up from there? No. It's, I don't know. Because it. No. All right. Well, we'll continue with the. Do you know how to fix that? Go ahead. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Audience participation at its finest. That. Settings is over. And we really do want to show you this. It worked right before because it's really good. I think it's really good. Jess gets a little oh, embarrassed, it's but it's really yeah, good. Mine. I know what you're talking about. I thought you had to go to settings. You drag it over. Yeah, the extended the thing, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going. I apologize. Yeah. So if I knew it because I had it out. Or you can do duplicate and it should show Yay! Thank there we you! Go. Oh my goodness! It's ready! Let's get her a ticket! A Wham's Pride ticket! <laughs> <laughs> you saved you. the day. All right, so please don't judge me, but in a middle school, our philosophy is make fun of yourself before the kids have a chance to. <laughs> Lord help us, here we go. Oh, my God. 
And just to show you some of our glorious memes, I mean, we really, we really did it up. This, uh, Oh, th these are some of our prize winners. Th these are pictures of our reception. We were um, able to apply um, for prizes from the Pittsburgh Penguins. So we had four Pens tickets to give away at our celebration last year. So our big winner won um, four tickets to a Pens game, a Pens t-shirt, and the Pens also sent um, like a street hockey set. They sent four of them. So we were able to give those out too. So those were free. So it was a really good prize and it was free. <laughs> and along with our email reminders, we'd send out a meme every day of the week, like picture it, Golden Ticket Week 2023. Or hand out those tickets or it's Shady Pines for you. <laughs> Back in St. Olaf, we love Golden Ticket Week. <laughs> and then Blanche, I can't decide what I love more, Golden Ticket Week or my gentleman friends. <laughs> And with that, I'm going to just stop and let the foul talk. <laughs> so that actually helps with our staff buy-in. You know, every school has staff members that, you know, you just have to convince them a little bit more to, to buy in, to participate, to, you know, just, just suck it up and, and join us. Um, and sometimes they just don't, but we try really hard to get everyone involved. Um, things that we've learned is, you know, you really have to go slow. So we rolled out our program and, you know, typically, you know, I, I don't know if this, is, I'm sure this is all districts, you know, something new comes along and everyone thinks, oh great, this is going to be here for a year and then something new is going to be next year. Um, but we made sure to say, like, this isn't going anywhere because at that point we had a grant and we had to have it implemented, I believe, for at least three years. So we kept saying, like, it's not going anywhere. Like, you have to, this is something that you have to do and we're going to do it every year. Um, and that actually really helped. And, that, and it's still there. So we're in our eighth year and we're still doing it. So at least now people can't say, oh, it went away after a year. No, it really didn't this time. Um, consistency is key. So we found what the staff liked and giving the tickets and we just kept going with that. Um, we tried a few different things along the way, but you know, we were able to, to maintain what we were doing. Um, administrator accountability, you know, if we, if some teachers, if you don't have someone like looking over them, they're not going to do it. So at the beginning of each year, um, our administrators send out a Google Doc and the teachers have to record what classroom system they are doing. So they at least have to send that in so when administrators are going in to do an observation, they can at least look around and see that they're doing something for the PBIS program, that they're acknowledging students in a positive way within their classroom. Um, we really tried to give the staff as much time as possible to create their systems. As Jess mentioned, um, at the beginning of the year in service, we gave the staff members time and we gave them ideas as well. Um, Our school secretary, um, she was amazing. She was instrumental in helping us like make the rule posters like I talked about earlier. But any, any, you know, at any signs that you needed done, any you know, cricket lettering that you needed done, she, she would do anything to help those teachers. So it's really nice to have someone like that in your corner um, for your program. And what we had done um, with, we have a poster machine in our office and our secretary created posters for every single classroom, not only with our expectations, but each teacher um, was able to design their own, you know, what safe looks like with those three expectations. So everyone had the same looking poster, like Mrs. Meehan's classroom expectations, here they are, safe, responsible, respectful, this is what it looks like. And then um, no matter what room you walked in in the building, there was one of those hanging there for that teacher. Um, again, we provided a lot of options. So we gave a packet of all of those different acknowledgement systems. We tried to give money, um, what we could if teachers like needed a little bit of support. So we really tried to make it as easy as possible. Some teachers love it, they, they will do whatever they can. Other teachers, they just want to hand it to them. And, and that's fine, you know, their, their focus is somewhere else. Um, we do like to recognize the staff too. 
So we try to give some gift cards every once in a while, um, and I know funding is difficult for most schools. Um, we are very fortunate that we do have a budget that we can use for our PBIS program each year. Um, it's not huge, but it's probably more than most schools get, um, and we are able to do come to conferences like this, but we also buy our prizes. We try to look for donations anywhere we can. Um, at the end of the year, any leftover money in that account, we buy gift cards for the following year that we can give to the students or even buy things with those gift cards for the students because like with the school budget, if you don't spend it that year, it goes away. So we would like to use up all that money. Um, and we really don't cater to the naysayers. Like you still have to do it. Okay, doesn't matter if you don't like it or not. Like this is our, this, these are our expectations. This is a school-wide program. Like you have to join in. So it can be tough, especially that last one. It can be tough to not cater to the naysayers because they're the loudest voices. Um, but if you, I mean, I, I even fall into that negativity trap where I, I'm so concerned with the negative comments that we receive about our program that you forget that like 80% of your staff, if you give them some support, they'll do it. So don't cater to the few, you know, support the many. That's what we've learned um, along the way. Oh, the naysayers. Here's our sweet revenge for the naysayers. <clears throat> well, they're teaching for the next two days. We're up here in Hershey. And guess what? They're, co they're covering our classes. So, how about that, naysayers? Can we not put that in the video for people watching at home? Let's just cut that. <laughs> okay, some of the staff incentives that we do. Um, we or have Wednesday Spirit Day, so um, our PBIS team, when we are able to have our meetings, like we do meetings a little bit differently than some schools. Um, we try to have like short meetings when we can, but like we found at the beginning, like when we have those short after school meetings, we don't get a lot done. By the time you get everyone there and everyone on the same page, it's time to go. So um, we are fortunate um, to, we try to have four full day meetings a year, like one each semester to plan the following semester. And we get a ton done that day. We, at our last one, we made um, spirit calendars and incentives for students and staffs for the next six months. Um, and then it's ready at the beginning of the month for to send that out. Um, we do, well, so we do the spirit days um, on Wednesdays. Also, every time our board fills up, and we announce winners the following day. Staff gets to wear jeans and their WAMS Pride t-shirts. Staff gets WAMS Pride t-shirts um, every year. So we have a lot of them now. So everyone likes that because then you don't have to find anything for clothes. Um, we also like to do staff treat cards because the staff really likes that. We have our student team and they go around with a cart that we've loaded up with goodies from Sam's Club and Costco and they go from teacher to teacher and call them out and they pick a drink and a snack. So the staff really likes that and the kids love doing it. So they get really excited and we get tons of volunteers like, let me do it, I wanna go around and do that. Um, coverage is tough. So what we were able <laughs> to do to help the staff members, anytime there would ha is an extra sub, which is, it's rare, but if there's a sub that's available ninth period or especially ninth period on a Friday, um, I actually have my prep ninth period and I would go and like pick someone off the board and let them leave a period early, start their weekend early. So I'd cover their class and, and let them go. And you know, you can be strategic about that. The naysayers never get that. Um, but what's so, what's so, yeah. What's so nice about what Valerie just said is she's giving up her own prep to do that. So that just shows you how committed she is to this program. Thanks. Um, but they, they appreciate that and, and then they can see like okay well they're giving me this so I better start joining in and I better start giving out those tickets and acknowledging students so you know it's, it's a give and take um, we also like to do coffee and hot chocolate bars we recently did um, I'd be muffin without you and we set up um, all kind of muffins on a cart. Since we are going through construction, it's a little bit harder. So right by our mailboxes in the main office, we set up a cart that had all these muffins on it. Um, and teachers came in on a Monday morning and were able to have a treat. So they really liked that. 
Um, these are some pictures of our student team delivering the snack card. This was on Valentine's Day. Our WAMS Pride student team actually created um, little cards thanking the teachers. So they colored them in and they created some little cards. You can see some that have them there. Um, and every teacher got a little thank you card when they came out to get their snack. That was for Valentine's Day. Um, the yes. students actually have more fun than the teachers do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh no, I, I kept advancing when I shouldn't have oh. been. That's my fault. Um, the, te the, the students actually have way more fun and they, they are so excited to participate in that. And it's really heartwarming to see, and it really restores your faith in middle schoolers to see students so eager to love on their teachers. It just, it's awesome. We had our student team create Wordles last year, um, and even the teachers that are like pretty harsh and we didn't think like we'd get very much love, um, they had some really nice ones. Yeah. <laughs> so the kids, like we have names on top of them, and our student team, they all grabbed them and write down all these words to describe their teachers, and that was something that we could pass out on Valentine's Day or Teacher Appreciation Week that kind of makes the teachers feel good too. Speaking of student teams, we found another cornerstone of sustaining our program has been establishing a student team. Um, so about four years into our PBIS journey, um, we decided to try uh, doing a student team. And it was, the first year was kind of a learning process. Uh, we, we learned what not to do, we learned what to do. We learned that um, smaller is better. This is our team. group, that our first year. It was way too big, like huge. It was a lot. Um, this was a fun activity though. Yeah. This was cookies and conversation with our new assistant principal. So it was his first time meeting and the kids loved it because they got to ask him all kind of random questions. Um, but that was our team. That was our, our, our first team. It was big. <laughs> so what we do at WAMS, um, we like to give our staff time to get to know the kids. It is teacher nomination based. I should have I should have started with that. So we like to give our staff time to get to know our students. So around mid-October, this time of year actually, we send out an email to the staff asking for nominations. Um, as a team, we decided on the criteria that we were looking for before we sent out the email to the teachers. Um, there are certain criteria that we wanted, uh, we didn't necessarily want like the straight A students, the you know top academic performers. We wanted to get a nice variety and I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, so we emailed the staff for nominations and then we invite the nominees, the student nominees, to an informational meeting where we tell them about the expectations of our student team for WAMS. So here was the criteria that we, that we identified when we, uh, when we sent out our email to the staff. We, our philosophy was we kind of want the diamonds in the rough. We want those, those in-betweeners in middle school because middle school is a pivotal time. You have students that could, you, you look at them and you see so much potential and they could go one way or they could go the other. So we really wanted to, to bring in those diamonds in the rough, so to speak. Um, we didn't want the typical top performers that always get recognized. We, want, we wanted students who had street cred with their peers because you want students to look at that person and say, oh, it's, oh that cool kid's being respectful or it's, it's kind of cool to be kind. You want students that have that quote unquote street cred that others look to them and look up to them and say, oh, huh, well, if they're, if they're being respectful to the substitute, which you know a lot of students aren't, if they're being respectful to the sub, I'll do it too. Um, we wanted students with strong attendance because that is one of our um, big things that we try to promote at our school. And then, of course, you want your students on your team to be personable, outgoing, and helpful. You want students that aren't afraid to tell you, you know, if something's not working. When we have, when we have student team meetings, you know, we ask them, give us honest feedback. What prizes do you like? What, what are students saying about the program? In fact, we actually just took our students to a summit. Um, invited by Jake Mensinger, he's our facilitator at WAMS. Um, so we took them to this summit and in brainstorming with them some pitfalls and some, some good things about our program, they told us our board isn't filled quick enough. We want, we want to see more, uh, we want to see more rewards, we want to see more, more tickets handed out. 
And that's coming right from the students. So we took that back to the teachers and said, you know, listen, this is what the kids are saying. They want more tickets handed out so more students have an opportunity to be rewarded. And that feedback is really, really important. So you want to make sure you have kids on your team that aren't afraid to tell you how it really is. And they'll tell you what kind of rewards they want, what kind of prizes. They'll tell you, yeah, you know, with my little silly video, they'll tell you what video will work, what video won't. I just kind of ignored them with the Golden Girls one. I, I just did what I wanted. Um, <laughs> But, um, but they'll be, you want kids that are gonna be honest, brutally honest in middle school, um, and it'll get, give you good feedback. Um, so our team responsibilities include things like reward board maintenance. They will clear the board for us. They will, um, you know, it's, it's time consuming to take all those tickets down and inventory them. Um, they give us ideas for spirit days. Um, they, are, they help us with media and school announcements. Um, they've done, public service announcements on the, uh, on the overhead, on the, not overhead, on the PA system, um, promoting kindness week, um, and they do, they do all kinds of PSAs. Uh, ticket production, they help us with that, and special projects, special projects like you saw the Valentine cart. Um, what's, what are some other ones? Oh, take your child to work day. They are the tour guides for the little kiddos that um, teachers bring to school. So they, they do a scavenger hunt with them all around the building, and then they host a little reception for them with cookies and treats. So they get to, they get to have two periods out of class and do that, and they think it's really super fun. But they emerge as leaders of the building, and it's really awesome to see, like we're having a, we're having a kickoff this year for PBIS, and we're doing this whole game show theme, and we're utilizing the students on the student team to be the contestants in the, in the um, it's called the Pride is Right. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> we're gonna do Respect Plinko. <laughs> it's gonna be so great. Um, but yeah, the, the students on this team are gonna be instrumental in helping with that assembly, and they get so excited. They're like, I wanna be in it, I wanna perform, I wanna be in all the skits, yeah. Fun. They really like the small group. So this year, since we haven't finalized our new group for this year, um, our seventh and eighth graders from last year, we chose just a few of them, about 10 of them, to come to the student summit. Um, and they absolutely loved it. And it was so nice to work with a small group. Um, when we got back, we had pizza for them for lunch. And we all just sat around a big table. And we just talked about anything that would work and what they wanted to do and ideas. And it was just so nice to actually hear what they had to say. And they're like, can we just keep it us? Because this is wonderful. And they were all different grades and they didn't know each other at that time. And now they're like this great group. I saw um, some seventh and eighth graders in the hallway the other day and like just their interaction and them talking to each other, that wouldn't have happened if they weren't on this team together. So it, it really brings other groups of kids together too. And all the fun stuff and all the really cool things that have been going on with PBIS, it also helps with student attendance because these kids have something to look forward to, especially after COVID when there was nothing. So now they have all these fun things and activities and these things that are coming up, and so it really does help with student activities. Way before COVID, a lot of years ago, we had in our school something called the advisor program. Now you hear it in conjunction with PBIS, but we had this a long time ago. And what the advisory program is, we have it twice a month and we have about 10 to 15 kids for each teacher. Everybody in the whole school, the principals, the counselors, the teachers, and we have a represent, we represent the kids from all three grades. So in my advisor group, I have some from sixth, some from seventh, and some from eighth. And so what it is, basically, it is a, a touch point for these kids to kind of have their person, their person they can go to like their second mom, their second dad, if anything goes wrong, they can come to us and with any problems, this, that, anything we'll talk about. And they also get to meet other students in the school that they would have never met had we not had these advisor groups. So what we do in the advisor groups, um, like I said, they're held twice per month to build connections between the students and the staff. They're smaller groups, which is nice, so it's not so overwhelming where you can't do anything with them. Um, the time is used to reinforce various initiatives. So we do things like goal setting, test taking strategies, and we also use this as a time to do some PBIS activities. So we did one, I believe last week it was on respect. So it was how do you treat your fellow peers with respect? How do you treat the teachers? How do you treat administrators? How do you treat the maintenance workers? How do you treat the cafeteria workers? How do you treat substitutes? Because, good Lord, they all treat every one of us differently. 
you know, depending. And then especially the substitutes, though. Oh, good Lord. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. The pull, yeah, it was really cute. Okay. Data is used to determine which PBIS expectations need to be revisited. So if we see the kids, you know, running through the halls all the time or bullying or all that kind of stuff, we use that data to determine what activities we want to implement during the advisor period. Um, also, what we're going to be doing um, in the next couple weeks is the opposite weeks that we have advisor, and we usually have it right before first period for about 20, minute, 20 25 minutes, we're doing this thing called activity period. And we used to have this years ago when I first started where every teacher would come up with some kind of educational activity like chess, you know, play chess and you can say, you know, that's learning numbers or book club or crochet, crochet. you know, you can learn how to do that. So we're going to be implementing that on the, on the off weeks from advisor program. So we'll see how that goes. That's supposed to start next week or maybe the following week. That, that club time, that alternating club time, is also when our student team meets. So instead of them going to chess, they would come to us. Um, and typically, if they can make it to at least one per month, that's fine. But if they really have a, another activity that they really, really want to participate in, we're kind of fluid with, you know, attendance at the meetings. So I know a few years ago when we did the advisor program, we had some really cool activities. For instance... Um, uh, the, the guidance counselors brought in all the really weird fruit things out there, like ugly fruits, star fruit. Star fruit. Really I can't even think of weird fruits, like pomegranate, weird stuff like that, okay? And so every advisor group would have that. So we would show these to the kids, and then we would cut them apart, and then every kid would taste it if they wanted to. And just, you know, show them, okay, this is all the weird stuff that's out there, so, and it's edible. And then we would do individual conferencing. We would also do sometimes the whole school would right before PSSAs, we would use it sometimes and say, okay, everybody, here's an activity that we're gonna prepare the kids and just reinforce their ELA skills on inferencing or math or something. Now, was that popular? No, because we had a lot of teachers that said, well, you know what, I'm not teaching another period. I'm gonna blue sheet this and get paid for it for 25 minutes, okay, whatever, okay. But guess what, those weren't the teachers that were tested, right? Those weren't the teachers that were, um, their scores depended on everything, so. Yeah, so we had to deal with the naysayers once again, but they had to do it. So, as you can tell, Bobby Joe just tells it like it is. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> she can pretty much say whatever she wants, and it, it's nice well, having her on the team. Yeah, because but that's because nice. okay, but that's because I'm ELA and tested. So there's a lot of pressure, right? As you guys know, that are tested subjects, and no, nothing to take away from anybody else that's not tested. But oh my God, in heaven, is that pressure? Okay, because you got your PSSAs, then you got your PVAS scores, and then this and that, and then it starts all over again in September. You know. All right, so we use it a lot of team building activities, and the kids really enjoy it. But having the three grade levels represented in advisor was a little bit difficult at first because they didn't want to talk to each other. They just kind of sit there, like. So then we have to get these activities to get them to interact. So we had this one straw activity where they had to combine the straws and then get in a big circle and without the straws falling. It was kind of cute. And they actually really liked that. So they just started talking. And it's not offensive, inappropriate, weird things. It's kind of fun. So they're getting used to it. Um, yeah. So, OK. okay. Um, so with the, with the advisory, um, our administration were, they were noticing some areas where we were falling short behaviorally. Uh, responsibility, respect, students not charging their Chromebooks, um, students coming to class late. So our admin came to us and said, is there anything we can do during advisor to reinforce some of these expectations for WAMS Pride? So we, we planned and we, we, um, we took some of those, we took some of that feedback and we developed a few lesson plans to, um, to help address those concerns and almost reteach and revisit um, those expectations. So one of the things we did, we did a bingo that was all encompassing. Our principal read clues over the PA and everybody in the school had bingo boards. And it was almost like, it was almost like a game show kind of like where students like the first student to rush down to the office and say bingo and show them their card like they got a they got a prize they actually got um Sarah's candy bars I think I don't want to say the s word here in Hershey sorry <laughs> they got candy that shall not be named um <laughs> but it was a really fun activity because you saw um you saw students in eighth grade just as excited as students in sixth grade, and they're like, I got bingo, and they would run down to the office. We played a couple rounds of that, but the questions on the bingo board were everything from test-taking strategies to, 
you know, what side of the hallway should you walk on? And so it, it was kind of all encompassing, reinforcing all of those things, um, re reinforcing all of those things in our school. Another thing we did was we played a Blook It review. Um, do you guys want to play Blook It? Do we have time? Let's have some fun. So if you want to go to blookit.it. I'll, I'll pull up the... Uh, and then we'll give you the code. Here's your code. Um, I created this, so if you don't like it, sorry about it. Um, yeah. I said the wrong. It's play.blookit.com. Is that the right screen? Yes, you're good. Um, so again, we just included questions from our behavior matrix. Um, you know, what is one way that you can show respect in the classroom? What is one way that you can show responsibility in the hallways? And students, uh, oh, look at you, Char Bear, <laughs> Cher Bear. You're funny. While we're signing up, does anybody have any questions about our program or? General musings. <laughs> Is it not? Oh no. Should I refresh it? Yeah. Let's refresh. Let's start again. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a brand new one. It could be the reception down here too. We haven't had very good reception with the Wi Fi. Thank you for your patience with us and our inability to navigate the technology. <laughs> sure. How do you turn it down? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And like the play, it, yeah, the kids usually like it better than food. Yeah. The kids love this. And they play a little bit more. Right? Like, oh yeah. It's so nice you could just sit there. I tried. I tried to be a little cheeky with some of the questions and the responses. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Here we go. You can steal candy off each other. Most candy wins. We Game won't on. go for the full seven minutes, but we can end it and see who our winner is. Oh, Alicia just took 10 candy from Lori. So we are all respectable educators in this room, but imagine this with a room of middle schoolers and they're like, whoa, there's all this shouting and cheering and they get so mad at each other when they steal each other's candy or in tower defense when they, yeah, it's good times. And with the Blook It review that we did in our advisor, um, we, gave, we gave prizes um, to all the advisor teachers. We, we put prizes in their mailbox to hand out to the winners of the Blook It games. So the, uh, the students were rewarded for winning the game.
<laughs> See, my room, they get all like oh. angry at each other. Yeah. Very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another Jess H in the room? Hi, I'm a Jess H too. I like the water bottle one. False. Humans need at least 150 ounces of water a day. I was a bit snarky in some of the responses, the, uh, the answer choices that I gave. All right. Do you, want, do you want to play it through to see who's the winner, or can I? No, you're good. Okay. So does... Oh, okay. How do I stop it now? All right, here we go. We're going to see who's the winner. Final standings. Shannon. Let's give it up for Shannon. Where are you, Shannon? Yes. Wonderful. Big winner. We would not do this in an actual middle school classroom because we wouldn't want to shame those who were not in the top three. <laughs> All right. Here is, here is our contact information. If you have any questions about our program or um, anything else that you heard in our presentation, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. Um, also, if you're interested in seeing some of our, um, some of our products that we have, um, like if, you, if you want the Golden Girls memes, I, I'm happy to share those. I'm really proud of them. Um, no, but if you, want, uh, if you want to see what our student team application looks like, we have a student team contract. Um, we would be happy to share those with you um, and help you get started with any part of your program if you don't have a student team already. Um, advisory lesson ideas, we've got a ton of those. So, any questions? No, we don't get anything for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, this is yeah. this is our payoff. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I guess my a follow up question to that is in terms of like the teachers that are involved um, and kind of like put this together, it's like a new idea, something that came down from the top where teachers were invested, or you just felt like this was something that you're for. When our, so two administrators ago, um, we, had a, we had a brand new principal, and he, I think, I think he had heard about it at, at his other school. Um, he was actually the one who brought it and said, I wanna do, I wanna do PBIS. Um, but what he saw was very different from what our AIU, how, how they roll it out. Um, our intermediate unit is very methodical in the pro in the approach to rolling out PBIS, he wanted to go, you know, guns a blazing, and um, our facilitator was like, "No, we've we've got to slow down, slow down." Um, so we, our administrator actually brought it, and he put out an email to the school to the staff asking if there were any interested victims slash volunteers, and um, we were the we were the ones who responded. It hasn't been easy. It, it hasn't been easy at all. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this on the way up here. We spent a lot of time trying to um, talk people off the ledge for this and almost like arguing with people about this and trying to justify why this is a good program. A lot of time. So we have one guy that did not stop to see us in the hall and he'll go, Peebus! <laughs> Which is awesome in a middle school. <laughs> Peebus. <laughs> it's really funny because the kids do a double take. They're like, 
What did Mr. Burke just say? Yeah, that's right there. You have that, you know. But he's not even there. Yeah. But we have um, we have about seven teachers um, on our team, but um, it, it's kind of hard for everyone to kind of get together. So it really is the three of us that primarily run the team and put in the extra time. And we do, it, it's just volunteer, but we like what we do. We love middle school, we love our kids, so. Ultimately, um, it helps the environment and the culture of your yeah, school. Yeah, we just want like, it to be a place where everyone goes and has fun and the teachers enjoy being there, so we do what we can and try to ignore those other teachers. Okay, those same teachers are the first ones when there's an issue mm -hmm. in their classroom, they'll say, well, I thought P PBIS was supposed to fix it. So they'll come at us, you know, at the PBS to fix all this stuff. Well, no, you have to do something in your classroom, you know? So they're the first ones to explain, but they won't do anything. So you have to deal with that. Did you have a question? Yes. So we're struggling within our secondary levels with the paper tickets of kids losing them, um, trading them, um, selling them. So we have we've had students hoard them. Um, so what we've done we've done we've tried to switch it up a little bit. Like we've had one um, one time we said okay only eighth graders can put their tickets on the board. We're going to do an eighth grade reward. Okay next week only seventh graders can put their tickets on the board, and then the next week only sixth grade. And we're going to make it a competition who can fill the board the fastest. So that kind of helps students unload the the hoarding that they've done. Um, Another time. Um, what we found is like students were hoarding them and they were trying to put like to do an entire row so it would take the months or by the end of the year then they were for sure to win if they had a ticket on every single like every single slot all the way across um so our kids are supposed to go down and put their ticket whenever they have like free time if it's supposed to be on their way to lunch or on their way to a special or on the way to gym or at the end of the day um one thing that we did like during our announcements we would say okay if you have a ticket it needs to go on the wall we're getting ready to fill up and we'd have a ton of kids come down at that time because we found that the kids a lot of the kids who were hoarding them were just because they didn't have time and then if they were holding on to them then they'd lose them so this way it gave them a time and like their teachers couldn't really say no because we were making the announcement throughout the whole building and it was able a time for them to unload it but if you really think about it though even if they are trading tickets selling tickets doing whatever they're doing it really doesn't matter because what they want is a ticket right. so ultimately it makes their behavior um, more positive and try to get better because they want those tickets and they see the other kids getting the tickets. So if they want to sell their tickets, <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you tickets to buy here or give me money. I don't care, you know? So. <laughs> yes. I was going to say that, that caused some issues though in our, so the, the rule now is they have to fill out an ink pen. Cause oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. another good rule, and this is like a game changer. Oh, so the the, the office somehow got them printed with our signature stamped on it, and it saves a ton of time. Now, the oh. drawback can be is you leave them out, a kid can steal them. So you have to, like, you, you can't, like, just have to, like, you know, that definitely it was a game changer to see people giving them out because they're free, they're ready. I know it doesn't seem like much to sign it. Oh, uh, yeah, I understand that, yeah. but when they are ready, it's much easier, for sure. Any other questions? Yes, again? Sorry, as a follow up. Um, so in our in our tier fidelity inventory, when we do the check, they're asking, you know, you ask a certain percentage of kids, have you been received an award or an acknowledgement within the last two months? But giving it only to, you know, two out of a week per teacher, are you meeting that fidelity? You are. Yeah, we have about 70 staff members, so that's 140 tickets a week. Um, and they, and some teachers like hang on to them or ask for extra. Like if teachers do ask for extra, we do give them to them. Um, so, I mean, we really do hit that. Um, and sometimes those kids realize that too. Um, they answer that question based on are they receiving recognition in their classrooms too. So it might not be the school wide, but they are doing it in their classrooms because they're being held accountable. Yes. We ha um, we're budgeted, we have about $2,000 a year. And then we beg PTA for some money. Um, sometimes they can give us some, sometimes they can't. Um, we, what started us off was a grant. We had a $5,000 grant and that really, that's where our money came from to start everything off. So that's where our main items came from. Um, our $2,000 budget, you know, pays for 
Um, some of our travel expenses are in there, but um, we do a lot of our prizes. Um, we actually had another grant through um, PBIS um, for our tier two, um, and we are having an assembly that Jess mentioned, and we're having them come in. So we look for any opportunity to get free money, um, and we reach out to any local businesses for prizes or donations, any anything that we possibly can, and anything that's free too. Free time is, is great. Kids love free time, and it's free. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating in our session. Again, thanks for your patience with the technology issues too.